What's good y'all? Welcome back. Today we're going to be reacting to three disturbing true horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. Um, it's Halloween time, so I told you guys I'm going to put out as much scary content as I can for this month. Uh, let me know how you guys feel about Halloween. I fucking love Halloween. I love the spooky season. It's fucking amazing. Uh, won't be doing trick-or-treating this year. I'm a little too old. Um, but yeah, if you guys are doing trick-or-treating, let me know. If, if you guys feel like there's a cutoff date for trick-or-treating, let me know. Do you feel like you could be any age and still do that shit? But, besides that, let's get into the video. This shit already started off creepy, alright? I got the little, like, ominous light going across my face and shit. Like I'm in, getting interrogated. I fucks with it. My friend Brian and I used to be big on urban exploration, especially in the dark. About a half hour drive away from our houses is an old hospital slash asylum that's been abandoned for decades. It hasn't been torn down because it's in a really secluded location and it would just cost too much money. Okay, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I know we only 30 seconds into the video. I shit you not, where I live, there's like an abandoned building, like right across the street from my house. I shit you not. Right across the street is an abandoned building. I Ever since I moved here, I've been wanting to explore the fuck out of that shit. I know that's my white people shit coming out, but I feel like it would be hella cool. I tried to get my friends to do it. They said, fuck no. So, I don't know. Maybe one day if I get a, a, a group of, uh, you know, people that want to do it, I'd surely be down to do it. Brian and I wanted to bring a Ouija board along with us and explore it one Thursday night. Pulling into the unlit parking lot and seeing the massive structure standing tall in the night, even we were having second thoughts. Gangs were known to hide out in this building, or at least that's been rumored. Surprisingly, there didn't seem to be any security patrolling the perimeter, so the process of getting in was pretty easy. We found yeah, a broken window that seemed to have been made into a common entryway by other urban explorers and delinquents. Brian and I have a lot of experience exploring abandoned structures at night, and admittedly even we were creeped out by this building. We made our way to the highest floor and did a little exploring up there. There were so many holes in the floor that our confidence in the structure holding our weight was low. The floors were creaky and soft in certain spots, and there were rooms that led into dark nothingness. Every I'm a big nigga, the floor pile would have caved in. Them, I'd have the haunting thought of someone or something being inside one of them. We found a good spot to set up the Ouija board and candles. Yeah, we went all out with this. Clearly. When the candles were lit, Brian and I placed our hands on the planchette and began our attempt at communicating with some kind of spirits. We weren't really the type to joke around with it, so we weren't pushing it around ourselves just to mess with each other. However, the planchette didn't move the whole time. Maybe that was because our Ouija board session was interrupted when we heard a creaking noise coming from inside one of the dark open rooms nearby. It wasn't just a fluke noise. It was a steady, consistent creaking once every one or two seconds. I don't like that that shit's coming in on the left side of my headphones. Brian and I quietly packed up our stuff. And he whispered to me to go shine the light inside of the room. Nigga, you shine the light! He whispered he's gotta be crazy. What if gang members were in there? Brian whispered, forget it, I'll do it. I whispered no, but he either ignored me or didn't hear me. He tiptoed over to the doorway, which was pointless given that he'd be shining a light into the room. However, he never even turned that light on. Because before he could, a distinct, quiet, Short yet sharp laughing or cackling could be heard coming from inside the room. Nope. I'm out that bitch. I'm out that bitch. Gone. It sounded like an older woman's cackle. It was the most disturbing moment of my life. Brian screamed run, and we both ran down the ten flights of stairs and back out the window we climbed in through. We continued running all the way back to my car and drove out of the woodsy property. We swore to never go back there, and we haven't. See, at least if I did that, that shit, my house right across the street, so I could easily get away. Places like this, and one of the few times we didn't, the most disturbing moment of my life took place. Man, I need to stop trying to do that shit. Now after watching this fucking story, it's like, mm, do I really want to take that chance? <laughs> it happened one night when my parents and I were hearing noises coming from outside of our farmhouse. 
The best way I could describe the noises were various types of cracking and thud sounds. My dad and I met in the living room to discuss what we should do, because we were positive that there must have been people out there stealing our produce. My dad ran to his gun closet and drew his shotgun, and together we stormed outside into the night, turning on all of the lights mounted on the outside walls of the house. I'ma be real with y'all. I feel like being on a farm is probably like top 10 creepiest places you can fucking live. Cause you got all that open field. You got like, uh, what is it? Cornfields? Corn, cr whatever the fuck them shits is called. Anybody could be in there at any time and you could never know. Like they could literally just be watching your shit. Like just thinking about that shit give me goosebumps. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. My dad apparently saw somebody because he started yelling stop as he ran to the crops. I followed him and I too started to spot legs running underneath the crops, the legs of two or more people. My dad called at me to keep up with him as he chased down the thieves in the dark, approaching the woods. How the fuck After are you chasing about 50 them? feet into the woods, my dad stopped and reached out his arm to signal for me to stop as well. As I was choking for air while out of breath, I watched my dad as he stood in place, looking around us. I swear we were standing still for like 30 seconds in silence. I didn't have the energy to ask what he was doing, but eventually I caught on. I saw what my dad was looking at. The fuck there was, was it? a person standing about 10 feet away from us, but all I could see was his face, since he was mostly covered by a bush. The sound of an October leaf crunching nearby revealed there to be another person standing only 10 feet away. As my dad and I looked around more carefully, we realized there were more than just two guys watching us. Fuck, even though you got the there strap, them something. niggas could still get your ass. Nine or even more. My dad slowly looked back at me, and then back at the person closest to him. What made the scene so much more disturbing, we could only see the people's faces, which were partially illuminated by the moonlight. Oh my god. My dad took a few steps back and broke the silence by saying, We're leaving. We both started walking backwards, noticing the people were inching closer at the same time. My dad waved the shotgun around to let them all know he was armed. When you should have shot that hoe off! And back onto the property, we sprinted back to the house. I'd never seen my old man run so fast in his life. He slammed the door behind him and watched the windows with the gun still in his hand while I called the sheriff's office. The cops took a while to respond, about 15 minutes, and the two officers that showed up were very unhelpful. They only asked questions and took down notes. They didn't actually go looking for the group we encountered. This nigga had a cult the cops in his left fields. Within 10 minutes, but it ultimately didn't matter, because by the next day, nothing happened. So we assumed it was over, and it was. There was never any follow up to this. Oh, we finna get an ad, y'all. Oh, shit. No, never. Please. I'm gonna be real with y'all. Cops, like, in, like, the middle of nowhere, they really don't help for shit. It take them hella long to respond. I'll be like, dude, we live in the middle of nowhere. Why is it taking you 20 minutes to get here? You're literally around the corner. What is this, a truck driver story? A friend and I were on a road trip from South Carolina to Jersey, nah. where we'd be meeting with a bunch of friends. We left late in the day to avoid traffic. We were somewhere in Maryland when my friend had to get off the highway to find the nearest bathroom. I don't mean to piss, I mean he had the runs all of a sudden and needed to go really badly. Alright, my nigga. We were How driving around some shit desolate runs. town looking for a place for him to go. There was practically no traffic and all the store lights were off. The place was a ghost town. The further from the highway we fuck. got, the quieter and creepier the surroundings got as well. Eventually, we came across a small 24-hour ghetto-looking Dunkin' Donuts. It was an outlet, though, so we had to pull around the strip to a basically hidden parking lot around back. There was not a single other car in the lot. It was so hidden that nobody would ever find it unless they were looking for it. We knew we were in a sketchy area, so I begged him to just hurry back. He said he'd be back in no less than half an hour, as he cracked a smile, reminding me of his annoying humor. He ran off around the building as I sat in the car, windows rolled up, and doors locked. So you told me this nigga shit Pretty outside? Bad sickness was still wearing off, so I figured it wouldn't hurt to step outside for half a minute just to get some fresh air. 
As I stood outside in that lot, I was constantly examining my surroundings. It took me a while to take notice to somebody standing all the way down at the far side of the parking lot. Now it was dark, but I could still tell they were facing the direction of the car. In direct response to that, I got back in the car and locked the door once again. I guess that was a bad move, because the person at the end of the lot started slowly yet menacing oh, me wow. in the car. Maybe whoever that person was saw my reaction as cowardice, and therefore saw me as an easy target. Either way, I texted my friend to come back right away since he had the keys and explained why. The person was getting closer, slowly but surely. I desperately stared at the screen, awaiting my friend's response, just- High key, what do you do in that situation, bro? Like, you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you got your phone. You in the middle of nowhere. Your friend, like, hella far away taking a shit somewhere. You in the car chilling. Doors locked. And you just see somebody walking up towards your car. Like, anybody that could walk up to somebody else's car knowing somebody in there is bold as fuck. So that means they either know some shit or they got some shit. I don't want to find out either. So, in that situation, I, feel, mm, I don't know if staying in the car would have been the best thing to do. But then getting out the car ain't smart either. Fuck. Y'all let me know what y'all would have did in this situation though, for real. It's like a guy awaiting a response from his crush. By the time my friend answered the text, he said, Wait, for real? Nigga, he yes, for real! In the same two seconds. He answered back with, Shit, laughing my ass off. Alright, be right out. I texted back, This is serious, dude. The person was a couple hundred feet away at this point. He was so close that I was about to get out of the car and run. My friend came running around the building just in time. He spotted the guy right away and hopped in the car. We took off with only seconds to spare. So like... We stopped a couple blocks down the road to catch our breath and discuss. My heart was still racing and I was still in panic mode. Meanwhile, my friend started to find it more and more hilarious. Eventually, far enough into the ride, I was able to laugh about it. But still, it was scary and still is scary to think about what would have happened if that person made it to the car. Nigga, you would have died. Maybe nothing. Maybe he just wanted change. Fuck that. Or maybe a lot worse. Well, shit. I fucking like Mr. Nightmare, bro. He, he really know how to, like, portray a story. But, um... For the rest of this month, like I said, I'm putting out scary content. If y'all have any suggestions for, like, any type of scary shit, let me know down in the comments. Original video link will be down in the description. And I can't wait for Halloween. I'll see y'all in the next video. I love y'all. Peace. I'm going to pull up in that new thing. Feeling like I'm Bruce Wayne. Yeah.